I guess I would have to say my favorite thing about Alaska is all of the experiences that we're able to have living here. That's it. This is the highest I've ever been. Mountains for days, Eric. I'd say this is a better view. We made it to the moon! Well, maybe not the moon exactly. We were just on the top of a mountain and it is spectacular up here. And we're gonna cook up some food in celebration of spring. We're cooking food. We're gonna cook mountain house meals. And this mountain we're on right now is just insane. We've been here once before, but we've never actually been this high. We took the snow machines up here and this is the last ride of the season for us. The snow is melting, spring is here. It is a nice warm day today. Couple new ones we're gonna make today. This is natural high. This is a cinnamon apple crisp. This is a really old one. And this is a really old mountain house, Mexican style rice and chicken. Not many days up here are this nice of weather. It's a super windy mountain and there's like all this, the snow's really crusty, but we got lucky today. I think we knew it was gonna be pretty nice. Not this nice, this is really nice. Last time we were here, a plane landed on the mountain. Pretty exciting stuff. And you can see Denali. You can see what is known as Nick Glacier. You can see the Kenai. You can see another mountain over there. You can pretty much see 360 mountains and the inlet. It's lovely. Gotta have coffee. That was good.
This looks really good. We're starting with dessert. This one's really good. This had a, what is it called? A butter crunch topping that you put on the end. So it's got a little crunch in there like a crisp would have. Apples, little raisins. This is delicious. That's super hot. That is so good. It's like a fiesta. Yum. All right, it's time to go. Another thing we're getting done today, we're putting our summer tires on. We just took off our winter ones and these are studded winter tires. So they're made of a little softer rubber and they also have little metal studs in them to help you grip on icy roads. So we're getting rid of these ones, on go the summer ones. Well, we are ready for summer adventures. These tires have actually been pretty awesome. We do a lot of driving in the winter months, so we decided to splurge and get the studded snow tires. If you can't drive like it's summertime, you know, you'll definitely slide out. You still gotta be careful, but they make a huge difference. We're making dinner. This is not shake and bake chicken. This is shake and bake salmon, except we're frying it. So I've got some of our last salmon here. We've got some flour, cornmeal, salt and pepper, a little bit of herbs and spices. We shake it up in this little Tupperware. We have been making this meal like all week. It's kind of Ariel's idea and we're making it again tonight. And over here, we have a very spicy but delicious coconut curry sauce going, and we're gonna add some rice noodles to that. And these are pre-cooked rice noodles. Dinner's done, chickens are laying good, so we pretty much put a fried egg on everything. Dinner served. Oh my gosh. Almost full, huh? Almost full. Like oh. This doesn't break the bucket. Oh yeah, look at that ice. I know, that was the taste of this right. It's slushy. Oh. It's really sweet this year. Don't you agree? How much do you think that weighs? Uh, I don't know, 40 pounds probably? Maybe one every second. Here, you gotta put it right. Okay. Yeah, it's been dripping from this little right here.
We're checking our bird shop this morning and it was completely full, which is awesome. We've been tapping this particular tree for about a week and the flow is a little bit earlier this year. We are breaking into the 40s during the day, but it is still below freezing at nighttime. So usually we'll have a little icicle right here in the morning. We come every other day to get this because we would like it to be really, really full. We're getting to drip about every one second on this particular tree, but as the day is going to warm up, it's going to flow a little bit faster. We have a great haul, so we're gonna be heading home with it. This is where we store our birch sap. It stays nice and cool here in the shade on our deck. And while Eric and I were driving home, we got a call that our bees arrived a little bit earlier than expected. So we are heading to town. We're gonna go pick those up and we're gonna be installing them today. And I'm just gonna grab some birch sap for the road. We're just about to pick up the bees. It's about an hour and a half drive to go get them and we just hit 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is awesome. We haven't been at 50 degrees in over six months. Here they are. We're heading home to install these guys. Well, I had hoped this was gonna be a sunny day out here, but it is not. Never fails that the days that we install the bee packages, it's cloudy, slightly windy, and there's a lot of snow on the ground. So we have to get it done today. This is the hive that they're going into. I cleaned out the old one, sad, but we got rid of them. So out with old, in with the new. We use these polystyrene boxes and they're foam. They work really well for the bees overwintering here in Alaska. You may notice the boxes are kind of small. They're all medium. So we just use all mediums for everything, including the actual brood boxes too, where the main part of the hive stays. That just makes everything easier. And we also use screened bottom boards. So there's just a screen and they get all this good airflow coming up year long. We even do that in winter. Behind me, we have a nuke box. And this was one of the boxes that we tried to condense the previous hive down to when we noticed that they were struggling. Obviously it didn't work since we lost them and it was just a little bit too late. We had some really weird weather back in January and February where all of our snow melted. And I know that this hive was coming out a lot due to that warm weather. Not really sure if that's what was the failure or not. The plan today is to install our bee package. This bee package comes with a lot of bees, somewhere in like the seven to 10,000 range and just one queen. So there's one bee in there that is responsible for managing everyone, let's put it that way. And then the rest are all just little worker lady bees. There's a sugar feeder on top we have to pull out. We're gonna get the queen situated first and then we're basically gonna dump everyone on top into this box. I'm not that concerned about smoking the bees since it is cooler today, but it's nice to have in case you need it. And if something goes awry and you don't have it, then that's not good. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. And they're free. Yeah. Looking at me with their beetle eyes. We took out the cork that was holding the queen in there and we changed it with the marshmallow. That's what we always do. The bees will chew that out within a few hours and then the queen will be released into the hive. We're gonna just push it onto this hive right here. I usually just like push it into the wax. So she's now stuck in there. The bees can still tend to her and we're gonna put her back in dump everyone on top. They smell her, so we really don't have to worry about them not getting to her. We're thinking ahead now. I'm adding the pollen right now because once I dump those bees, they're gonna be everywhere. 
the queen's in there. She's already got little worker bees attending to her. So we're good. We're good. Oh, wow, look at that. There's a nice, nice healthy amount of them in there, huh? <laughs> wow. We're going right in there. That's the most we've ever gotten. The best way to describe how you shake out bees, I've read, is kind of like thick oil. And you don't really want to shake them, you kind of want to just like tap. But that gets them to kind of like break their cluster and go down to where the queen is. This is insane. This is the most bees I've ever seen in a package. Look at them! They're huge! They don't even fit in the box. So naturally throughout this process, we probably lose some, some bees. Although I'm very careful to try not to kill any of the, the bees, of course. This is the most bees we've ever gotten. And I think it's because we got them a little bit early in the day and we didn't have to wait until the next day to install them. So they didn't, we didn't really have that many deaths. And what I'm doing right now is trying to get every little last single bee out because if they don't come out now, they're not gonna make it out later. It's just too cold. We're going into the night and they don't really know yet this is their hive. Sorry guys, come on, go to the queen. Come on guys, get in the hive. Okay, 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 come on. We already gave them the pollen patty and we are also going to be giving them some sugar water or syrup. And I have a little mason jar feeder with little holes poked in it. The reason we staggered the queen over here is we don't want this cold sugar syrup dripping down on her. So she's over here and this is where they can feed. All right, we're gonna get this hive closed up. There we go. Turned you down, right? That went way better than we were expecting. I'm very excited for this hive. And I forgot to mention that these bees are on comb that was drawn out by the previous hive. So that's gonna give them a boost for this year. And hopefully it is a awesome summer for them.
We're on a walk early this morning for Eric's birthday. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're gonna go out and get our trail cameras. We got a couple out here, less than a mile, but we wanna get them now because the snow's melting. We're not gonna be able to get out here pretty soon. So yep. we're gonna go pick them up. <laughs> That one's still got battery, that's good. So we got two trail cameras out here. They've been out here for probably two months now. And we brought a few different things out here. We hit a grouse with our truck and he got stuck under the truck. So we, we brought that out here. That was gone like extremely fast. And we brought out a, or parts of a caribou carcass that one of our friends gave us, a head, the hide, and some of the rib bones. So we'll see if we got anything. All right. Let's do it. We're making cinnamon rolls. We have a good amount of yeast and a cup of milk in our bowl here and I'm gonna be adding probably about a half a cup of coconut oil. We don't have any specific recipe that we use. We kind of make these a little bit differently depending upon if I'm making them or if Eric's making them, but they turn out wonderful every time. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, just a little bit of nutmeg, and then a little bit of vanilla too. We're gonna crack two eggs in there. And then we're also gonna add a little bit of white sugar. Now that our coconut oil is mixed, I'm gonna add a few more ingredients. And I did this last time and it turned out pretty good. This is flax seed, it's ground. So it has this really nice texture. And I'm gonna add a little over half a cup to there. Then I've got three cups of flour, but I don't know if I'm gonna need all of it. And what's really awesome about cinnamon rolls is you don't have to let the dough rise that long. Added a little more flour and this is the consistency we're looking for because we're gonna wanna roll it out. We're gonna let this sit for just a little bit and work on our filling. In celebration of birch tapping season, we are going to be using some of this birch syrup that we rendered down last year and we're not doing it this year we're just collecting the sap and drinking it fresh in fact that's like our favorite way to use it i guess because it's so sweet those first few days and once you freeze it it loses that taste in our opinion so we just like to drink it fresh as much as we possibly can this is awesome i know when we made it last year we tried to like substitute it for normal syrup like maple syrup and we didn't really like it that way it's extremely rich and it is wonderful and things like this if you're adding it to some sort of baked goods it's a long process to do and you need a lot of birch sap in order to make a very small amount of syrup. There we go. I'm probably gonna do under a quarter cup because it's so rich. And we're adding a bunch of brown sugar. We're gonna do some butter and coconut oil. And of course, we must add cinnamon. That looks perfect. If you have nuts, those make an awesome addition to this. I forgot to mention what the birch syrup tastes like. And Eric and I kind of both agree our best description of it is kind of like burnt caramel. So it's really, again, like I mentioned, it's just rich. It's, it's really good, but I don't really know the exact way to describe it. They fit perfectly and it's time for these to go in the oven now. We are going to cook them for about 20 minutes at 350. 
Instead of the icing, we're going to be using berries. These are raspberries from the garden and some wild blueberries we have left over. This is our last bag we have. And I'm just gonna be adding a little bit of honey to sweeten it up. That is going to take a while. smells awesome. We are going to let Eric try this when it cools. Well, I've been waiting all morning for this. This looks so good. Mm -hmm. Delicious. We're feeding our chickens the last package of hooligan and we fished for these. We dip netted them back in May, I believe, and it's April now. We're like a week away from May. So we are going to be dip netting again for these. Very exciting stuff. The chickens enjoy them just as much as we do. So we saved a few packages for them for this winter. And these are frozen, so we're gonna let them thaw out, but that's okay because we are supposed to not get down below freezing again. Let's see if that, that stays. And Eric wants to show you someone important. Chicken. We mentioned in the last video, we had some broody hens and they're all doing good. There's the mean one. We got one there, one over there, and we have two in the cages and we had one hatch. Let's see if we can find the little chick. Come on, little guy. We're pretty positive that this is a little rooster by some of its looks and the way it's acting. But that's the first new baby chick. This thing is like jumping around, it's having a good old time. She's still got two more eggs underneath her and it's been a few days since he hatched. So we're hoping that those ones were just a little further behind and they're still gonna hatch, but not, not bad. First little chick. Let's put him down and see what he does. Oh, man. oh, he's fast. Nice, healthy little chick. He's bouncing around, eating food, drinking water, really healthy. Over here on this one, this chicken, her eggs are due next. And I think she's got like six or eight under there. So hopefully pretty soon we'll have a bunch of little chicks running around. This will probably work. Right there? Yeah, and then I'll give you, I'll give you bins. Let's make it sure. So, I forget. I have to look again. I believe white cups were originally supposed to be Utah. Look at how long they are! Wow, that's like a chive. Yeah, This is a... Utah's on, I can't reach it. I thought that's what it was. It's a shallot. Yep. I think we got four. Minutes. 